Welcome to the Get Started with Istio Service Mesh workshop. Let me quick Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Lin Sang. I am the director of open source at solo.io. I have been contributing to Istio projects since the beginning. I've worked at IBM for 19 years and joined Solo early this year in 2021. And I've also wrote a book, Istio Explained, to teach you the best way to get started with Istio. Before we get to Istio, you might be wondering, what is Solo doing? Why am I giving you the workshop? In case you don't know, Solo is all about building application networking connectivities to solve these challenges through our Envoy and Istio-based solution, whether it's Glue Mesh or Glue Edge or Glue Portal and the extension using WebAssembly. Glue Mesh Management Plane, you could interact with Istio with the role-based API. We are also hiring as everybody else. Please check out our career page. Today, we're going to talk about this foundation badge. This is the Get Started Istio badge offered by Solo. It essentially teaches you how to get started with Istio, what are the best practices to get started, and we actually have a test at the end. We require 80% passing on our test, and you can retake if needed. We will issue the badges uh, in the next few weeks after you take the test. Before we get to the workshop, I'd like to talk about the challenges of microservices. Fundamentally, how do you observe the interaction among your services? How do you secure that communication among your services? How do you handle timeout and retries as you distribute your services in a distributed cloud environment? How do you precisely control traffic and new version rollout? A service mesh is a programmable framework that allows you to observe, secure, and connect your microservices. It essentially helps you to decouple your developers and the operators nicely without the need to ask your developers to rebuild anything. You might be wondering, how do we get here? In the beginning, there are Netflix OSS, where they provide Java-based libraries to perform similar functions to connect, secure, and observe their services. There is also Kubernetes, who have won the container orchestration war. Um, and the rise of Kubernetes drove many organizations into microservices so that they can leverage the power of microservices to increase their delivery velocity. There are a bunch of common functions provided by Service Mesh for microservices, such as how do you discover services? How do you load balance among your services? How do you secure that communication among your services? How do you control traffic? How do you mirror your production traffic for testing purpose? How do you apply policies to your services? And how do you observe the metrics and tracing and logging for your services? Is there any programmable API for me to config everything? 
without going to detail proxy configuration, which is extremely complicated. In case you are wondering why service mesh, fundamentally, service mesh help you solve these connectivity challenges of your services, whether it's security, whether it's routing, whether it's monitoring or service discovery. It provides that consistency experience for you regardless whether you are running your services, whether in Kubernetes or outside of Kubernetes, on your VM, in Biometal, it provides a nice abstraction for you. How does a service mesh work? A service mesh have a control plane on the top, which you would be programming the control plane through service mesh abstracted API by you controlling programming the control plane the control plane is intelligent to translate that into a configuration that the sidecar proxy can understand the proxy is injected to each of your services that participate as part of the mesh and also because of the proxy is sitting next to your application container, it would, in, it would in cap, it capture all the incoming traffic and all the outgoing traffic so that it's intelligent to upgrade that connection for you for mutual TLS. It's intelligent to collect telemetry data for you. It's also intelligent to determine which endpoint it should route the traffic to. Because of the proxy, it's part of the request flow. It's part of your data flow. We call it part of the data plane. There are a very rich competing ecosystem out there for service mesh. Many projects uh, such as Envoy, Istio, uh, GlueMesh, LinkD, uh, AppMesh uh, by Amazon, there's Kong, um, there's Console Connect and Service Mesh Interface. Some of these projects are in CNCF, some are not, but it's a really rich ecosystem out there. Today, since you are coming to a Istio workshop, we're going to get into the three key function of Istio, which essentially is connect, secure, and observe. Istio architecture is very similar to the data plane and control plane architecture of service mesh that we just described. As you can see, Istio D is the control plane since Istio 1.5, we've merged every single components into a single monolithic component called Istio D because we realize it's much easier to manage one single control plane components. The sidecar proxy can be injected to your services through automatic injection or manual injection and they are part of your request flow. This is where you want to pick the right service mesh architecture, the right project, because at the end of the day, the sidecar proxy is a critical piece of your infrastructure. Istio also supports um, the ingress gateway and the egress gateway. Through these gateways, you can define the services you want to export out of your cluster and the, also what are the services you want, um, external services you want the services in your cluster to have a controlled access to. Common adoption patterns, I would say, um, we're going to go through in the lab too. The first one is adopt Istio at the gateway. The second one is 
Adopt Istio just injected the sidecar and instantly got the observability function out of Istio that you can observe the dashboards for your services, you can view distribute tracing, you got a tons of metrics. The, f the third common pattern is observe if is to inject sidecar and get mutual TLS to get that secure communication among your services. And the last one is as you introduce newer version for your microservices, you can precisely control how the new version should be rolled out through a uh, dark launch, through a uh, header-based routing, and uh, how do you do export, um, Im import external services into the service mesh. All right, um, at here, I'm going to send you out a link to our platform. We're going to use a uh, instruct-based platform well, you would be uh, visit the link I just sent out, and then you would go ahead and start provisioning a cluster. So we're going to use the environment provided by Instruct. So the environment will essentially, the environment will have a virtual machine, and then uh, you're going to run a lightweight Kubernetes distribution called K3S. And then you're going to install Istio on that cluster and then perform the four key scenarios we just talked about. Let's get started. This is the link that you should be able to get to. If you are having trouble to get to the link, uh, make sure you log in with uh, either your Google ID or your Twitter ID or your GitHub ID. So we will make sure you log in first. And then once you log in, you should be able to see this particular lab. And I need you to click on start track here and get started with the lab. The lab is really targeted to be two hours and 30 minutes. And uh, we only have uh, an hour and 50 minutes here. So um, I'm going to try to run the lab with you so you can watch me doing the lab or you can um, do it yourself concurrently. Or if you don't like to do it concurrently, you can watch me do it first and then you do it uh, yourself. I'm going to save a little bit of time towards the end of each lab so that you could uh, potentially do it yourself. Um, the environment will be available for a few hours after the workshop. So feel free to leverage that if you couldn't finish the lab. Um, at the uh, at immediately. So don't worry, we will have the lab available for you for the next few hours. So, so what it's doing now is setting up the challenges. Um, As the environment is being provisioned, I would like to walk you through a little bit more detail about the first lab. So for the first lab, what we're going to do is we're going to pre-check our environment, just making sure it's ready, it's good to install Istio. And then we're going to explore different methods to install Istio. Um, and then um, there are different ways to install Istio. You can use Helm, you can use Istio Cardo, you can also use Istio Operate on the server side. For this step though, we're going to only use Istio Cardo because that's the easiest way to get started learning Istio. 
it still has different installation profile because this is a get started workshop we will teach you to use um, the demo profile but we'll also walk you through to view different other types of profile uh, it still also have add-ons so you're going to install add-ons such as Grifona, Jega, different components to view your mesh uh, dashboard to get visibility into your mesh uh, it's still upgrade. We're not going to cover that uh, in this workshop because this is a get started, but we will uh, cover it in a future workshop. As you can see, our lab environment is ready. So let me go ahead and get started. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to download the Istio release binary uh, and as you can see we're using is still 1.10 here and uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, you know add that is still cuddle to the path so we can call it easily so now what I'm doing is uh, you know to confirm my version 1.10 remember the pre-check command we talk about now I'm checking to see my cluster. Is it safe to install Istio? As you can see, no issue found. We're ready to install. I'm going to query my profile to see what are the profiles available by Istio by default. And next we're going to do is let's go ahead and install Istio, right? because we want to make sure you know we have the environment to play with as you can see I specify dash dash set profile equals demo means I want to install the demo profile and I love the status bar which shows you know where I am with the installation now it's installing the egress and ingress gateway As you can see, my Istio is installed. Uh, let's see. Let's check out all the resources that we put onto this cluster. There is a bunch of resources. Uh, there's Istio D, which is the single control plane component that we talked about earlier. Uh, there is Istio ingress and egress gateway. Remember our architecture diagram we talk about to control that inbound and outbound traffic um, in in the cluster and going out of the cluster uh, there are deployments um, there are a bunch of config maps uh, some of like istio leader right if you have multiple istio d this is where it can be used for uh, we have like CA secrets uh, as uh, secrets and we, a bunch of Envoy filter for telemetry purposes. So all it looks good. And uh, let's check out the customer resources installed onto the system. You know what? It's actually very few um, customer resource. It's about 12, I think. Istio also provide a convenient command called Istio Cardo Verify Install. As you can see, our install went very successfully. The next thing we're going to do is install the sample add-on. You can just install it as a Kubernetes application. So just run kubectl apply command. At the end, you may get this arrow, unable to recognize. Um, the reason you get this arrow is because sometimes like this customer resource is being applied before the customer resource definition is installed in your Kubernetes cluster. So to fix that, you just run this command again. So this would ensure everything is applied. Now, if we do a get pods onto the Istio system, 
wow, everything is running. You know, in just two minutes, I got everything running. The next thing we're going to do is, uh, you know, open up the dashboards uh, of Grafana dashboard and um, of the Permissus dashboard. Now, as you can see, I can do something here. See if I can get any information. Yes, I could. The reason is I have gateways as my as my data plane, so that's nice. Um, if we exit out of here, and I can also do similar commands to open up the Grafana dashboard. So go to the Grafana UI tab, and there you go. Here is your Grafana dashboard. We're going to play with it a little bit more uh, in in the future lab. But as you can see, there's metrics already. I didn't have to do anything. They just show up for me. The next thing we're going to do is uh, open up the Jega dashboard through Istio Cardo da dashboard command. Now, if you go to Jega, you know, we're not going to have any services because there's no traffic. But it's nice to see the UI here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, check out the Kayali um, dashboard. So go here. As you can see, you know, I have a bunch of workloads, hopefully already, just for, well, not really for Istio workloads, but, um, but for the control plane. So yeah, there's not much to see at the moment uh, because we haven't installed anything yet. So as you can see, if I select all, yeah, nothing. All right. So that's it, guys. Congratulations. Uh, you have installed the Istio control plane. Istio D, Istio Ingress Gateway, Istio Egress Gateway. You have also installed all the add-ons, right? Permissus, Grafana, Jega, and Kayali. So next, uh, we will learn how to expose your services to Istio Ingress Gateway securely so your clients outside of the Kubernetes cluster can access it.
as we are setting up the next challenging, uh, let me talk you through the next lab. We talk about the most common adoption pattern is adopt the gateway only, which means you have services running in Kubernetes that you want to export it out of the cluster by exposing your services out um, maybe on a particular port number, on a particular pass, on a Istio ingress gateway. You could also optionally config an egress gateway to say these are only these external services are allowed for my services in the mesh. Um, so this means you're not going to have sidecars on service A or service B as this diagram indicated. So your observability is only at the gateway. Your secure connection is also only of the gateway. So there's no secure communication between A to B or between your gateway to your services. We're going to walk you through Istio Network Resources. Uh, gateway um, allows you to configure edge load balancer configuration. Virtual services allow you to configure a list of route rules for your service. Destination rule allow you to configure subsets and policies apply for a particular destination service. Service entry allows you to easily access external services. And sidecar resources allow you to scope your sidecar proxy configuration to declare your inbound and outbound configuration. So it's an advanced topic which we will cover in a future workshop. This is one of my favorite diagrams that indicates the best way to understand uh, gateway resources, which is really what is the URL, right? What is my host? What is my port? What is the path of my URL I'm providing to my clients? And virtual services specify, you know, for that URL, where, where am I going to send the traffic? Is it service A? Which version is it sending the traffic? And destination rules specify, you know, what are the rules to apply for the client side load balancer to reach that particular destination? So in this lab, uh, we're not going to go through egress gateway due to the time, timing, limited time. Uh, we will uh, go through our example using web API recommendation and purchase history and we're going to expose web API to Istio ingress gateway. All right, our environment is ready uh, for this lab. Let's make sure we navigate to the Istio basic workshop directory. And the first thing I want to do is deploy our sample application by creating the Istio in action namespace first. And then we're going to deploy Web API recommendation purchase history version one and the sleep application. And let's go ahead and check if our pods are ready. Uh, looks like they all reach running. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is config the inbound traffic, right? So what we're going to do is uh, check out the service object on the Istio ingress gateway. As you can see, my Istio ingress gateway have an external IP. So we're going to export the gateway IP with the value of that IP. So that allows us to access the gateway uh, through this environment variable. We're also configuring the port number for secure and non-secure port. Now, the next thing we're going to do is config 
Istio Ingress Gateway, right? To do that, we're going to use the Gateway resource and the virtual service resource. So let's review our resources for the Web API Gateway. As you can see, this is the host. Uh, we are exposing that Web API service and we're exposing it with HTTP on port 80. Let's review the virtual service resource. Um, the virtual service is bind to the gateway we just deployed. Check the name that matches. And because we are deployed into the same namespace, so you don't have to use um, a namespace slash uh, for the gateway here. As you can see, the virtual service essentially can fix the route rule for this host um, on port 80 to uh, for the HTTP route to route to Web API in Istio in action namespace to port 8080. So you might be wondering why is port 8080, right? So if you do a guest service on the Web API, as you can see, the Web API is listening on 8080 on that container. So let's go ahead and apply our configuration, the gateway and virtual service resource. Um, now, after the configuration is applied, the Istio automatically config the Istio ingress gateway. And now if we access our web API service, you can see the service is actually up running and it costs the recommendation and purchase histories. Everything looks good. Um, you can, you know, dig a little bit uh, deeper into the Istio configuration here as this is the route configuration we just uh, declared for HTTP 80, right, for this domain. And uh, you can also, you know, drill into details on the routes of HTTP 80. As you can see, you know, when it's this particular route HTTP 80, it routes to Web API in Istio in action, import 8080, and it has two times of retries, and it's going to retry on its failure mode and with 503 status code. So this is all automatically provided by Istio for you with your simple virtual service and gateway resource. The next thing we're going to do is how do I secure the inbound traffic, right? It's nice we expose it on 80, but I want that traffic to be secure. So in order to do that, we're going to create a secret for Istio in action in the Istio system namespace. And then we're going to config the gateway resource to use the secret and then change to use HTTPS uh, as the protocol for the Istio in action.io. So this uh, TLS configuration, as you can see, we are config uh, simple TLS uh, with the credential point to the secret we just created. Now we're going to apply this configuration in the Istio in action namespace. Guess what's going to happen if we call the Web API on the secure port? Ta da! Everything works, right? Same, except that now the connection is secure. Now, my question to you is what's going to happen if I go back to call the Web API on the port 80? it's going to be rejected. The reason is our gateway configuration only ex exposed port 443, so anything else will be automatically rejected. Congratulations, you have exposed the Web API service to Istio Ingress Gateway and you have done it securely. The next thing we're going to do is adding services to the mesh so you can enjoy more benefits provided by the mesh. You can click on the check button to just check to see if you've done the lab correctly. 
and uh, you know if it's correctly we're going to load the next challenging for you All right, looks like the challenge is noted for us. Um, before we go to the lab, I want to quickly walk through the lab three. So in this lab, we're going to teach you mesh observabilities. So you're going to incrementally add services to the mesh, and then you're going to automatically see the visibilities of the interactions among your services and you get all that just simply by adding your services into the mesh so this is the magic of the sidecar proxy provides when you deploy pods and services to the mesh there are a couple of things i want you to check it out and understand so the first thing is we want to make sure you name your service port for each of them that you want to participate in the mesh so for instance for web api in this example we've named it um, http as our port number um, the pod must have a service associated with it so as you can see you know we have a service object and a deployment object for web api we would want you to label your deployment with app and version this is for observability purpose so we can differentiate this is the metrics from this particular app and for and this particular version of the app and we don't want you use uid 1337 
because the Envoy Proxy Sidecar is also using that UID. The last thing I want to ask you is, do you have net admin and net rule privilege as someone deploy the services into Kubernetes? If you don't, I highly recommend you to check out Istio CNI. In this lab environment, we're going to provide you um, those privileges, um, just so you know. So lab three is really about adding services to the mesh. We're going to gradually adding uh, Istio proxy to three of our services, web API, recommendation, and purchase history. All right, let's go to the demo of lab three. My environment is ready. So there are two ways to do Saika injector. The, the first way is the automatic, which is highly recommended. It works way better with Helm workflow. The second way is manual injection. In order to do automatic injection, the first thing we're going to do is label the namespace with Istio injection enabled. And then we're going to just query the namespace, making sure it has this uh, Istio injection enabled. Um, and then we're going to review the service requirement that we just talked about. So if you review on the a web API service, you can see the name, the the port, you can see the labels uh, that we added for observability purpose. You can see the container is actually point to 8081 uh, and along with a bunch of environment variable. By the way, we're using uh, a fake service from Nick Jackson from our friend at HashiCorp for this example. Now, we want you to do the same for the rest of the services, uh, just to go through the exercise. In order to add services to the mesh, uh, we're going to roll in restart uh, web API deployment. Uh, as you can check the pod status, you can do get pods, you can see, you know, it's running with two slash two and the old one is being terminated. The next thing we're going to do is checking out the logs of Web API, just making sure it's clean, it's good. Sometimes some pods after inject Saika, it does have problems. So you want to make sure it's still good. Now we're going to validate, we can continue call Web API through that Istio in action host uh, that we set up. Everything looks good. So um, let's check out the details of the pod. As you can see, it's actually a little bit more complicated here. This uh, pod actually have three containers. So there is a unit container and two regular containers. So the init container essentially set up the IP table rules and using the proxy v2 as the image, it sets up the IP table redirect um, with, um, you know, capture all the incoming traffic and capture all the outgoing traffic. So that magic is all done through the init container. So we're going to teach you how to understand uh, pilot agent uh, with the IP table command. So you can uh, find out, you know, what exactly th these parameter means by uh, running this command. So you can map back to um, the init container configuration that's above, right? So for example, you can do dash P 15001 map to, you know, dash P here. So this is the Envoy port uh, to redirect all the TCP traffic. The next container we want to call your attention is the Istio proxy container. 
So uh, let's go up a little bit. Take a water break. As you can see here, uh, it's the proxy container running in the sidecar mode. It has uh, um, concurrency. Uh, it has uh, istod as the search provider, the CA address. It has a bunch of environment variables, but what's important here is it's using the same image as the init container. And uh, it has a, a health check endpoint on port 15021. It has a bunch of configuration to increase resilience. It also have like the CPU and memory uh, for limits and requests. This is important for capacity planning, right? So whatever you specify here, if you overwrite the defaults, you know, you want to plan for that capacity in your Kubernetes environment. Uh, we talk about 1337 is being reserved. And it also has a bunch of uh, a volume mounted like some of these volume like the secrets are extremely important and it's your token and uh, the it's your envoy so all these are very important okay. all right so uh, feel free to poke around the configuration here um, this is how you add Web API to the mesh. With that, we are going to add the rest of our, uh, our deployment into the mesh. Now, if we do get pass on everything in the Istio in action, you can see everything is coming up as running. And continuously, you should do the tests just to make sure everything continues to be good. That's how we want you to roll out your services to the mesh. So, congrats, you've added sidecar proxy to each of your services. Let's talk about benefit, right? Remember, we talk about the resources. You have to do capacity planning for that sidecar proxy. But what are the benefits for you to spend the extra resources on CPU and memory, right? So the first thing we are going to do is generate some load. So we're going to run this uh, loop of 100. Every three seconds, we're going to, you know, put a little bit of traffic onto our web API through Istio Ingress Gateway. And then we're going to enable access to Kayali through the Istio Kado dashboard command we learned earlier. Now, if you navigate to the Kayali UI, you can select the graph on the menu and on the namespace, select Istio in action. So I'm going to unselect these two. And uh, let's see, uh, my favorite one is traffic animation and security. So let's go ahead and enable those. Um, yep. Now, if you do a refresh here, hopefully some traffic will come in. Yes, it did. Um, now you can see, you know, you, we got all these traffic. You can click on each of them. You can see, you know, we have mutual TLS enabled, which we will talk about that in the next lab. So by default, Istio has a permissive mode, which means we will do best effort to do mutual TLS. But if mutual TLS failed, we will continue to allow the traffic go through. So this is good for onboarding, but probably not something you want to run in your production environment if you only want to allow mutual TLS traffic. So we will talk about that in the next lab. How do you do enforcement of mutual TLS? The next thing we're going to talk about is distributed tracing. So we're going to do back to terminal two, uh, get out of the Kayali command prompt, 
and then copy over the command prompt to bring up the Jega dashboard. And then we're going to go to the Jega UI. So hopefully we have some services here. So the services I'm going to go to is uh, Web API, right? Because that's the service we expose. So if I click on Find Traces, you can actually see a bunch of traces. Like this one is going through Istio Ingress Gateway to Web API and to Recommendation and to Purchase History. You can click on this and then see, you know, how much time it's spending, you know, it has a bunch of information for you without you actually needing to do anything, right? So you can see uh, we have X request ID. So that's how, you know, the headers are propagated. That's how we know these trace span are connected to a single request. Uh, let's get control C out of uh, Jiga. We're going to look at Grafana dashboard next. Um, so we're going to uh, bring back to the Grafana UI and uh, let's see what we are, what we are doing. So we're going to select dashboard and uh, on the left side and then click on the manage button. We're going to see a bunch of dashboard for Istio here. We're going to view the control plane dashboard first. You can see how a control plane is pretty lightweighted. Um, it has a bunch of uh, configuration for pushes, right? So those are the configuration when we drive like gateway and virtual services resources. It has like all the XDS uh, active connection requests and sidecar injection. So a bunch of all this information without you actually needing to config anything. Uh, it's pretty nice, right? Uh, let's see. We can also go back to see Istio metrics. Let me check if this terminal is still running. Okay, it's still running. Which is nice. So if we go back to manage and Istio and you know we can see the mesh dashboard, you can see all the data here. You can actually drill into any of these and also see you know the purchase history data, right? This is like uh, HTTP layer 7 data. You got all the incoming request duration the size, you know, all the request based data is available for you. Very nice. So feel free to play with the grief on that dashboard. As you can see, you know, it is very powerful. The observability provided by a service mesh like Istio, the moment you add the sidecar proxy, to your services, it magically gets distributed tracing, gets all the Grafana dashboard, Kayali dashboard. It helps tremendously when you need to debugging problems. So congratulations, you have added the sample application successfully. And let's click on the check button to see if I did this lab correctly. And you enjoy the benefits provided by the service mesh. As we are
as we are setting up the next challenging, I want to walk you through the next lab we're going to walk through. So we're going to talk about secure communication. How do we increment the best practices incrementally adding services to the mesh and also incrementally config mutual TLS starting with one service at a time and adding this to your target service. So the way you config strict mutual TLS is a server side configuration through peer authentication policy in Istio. So you can apply that at mesh wide. You can apply that at namespace level. You can also apply that at a particular service level. We recommend incrementally, but because this is a get started workshop, we're going to apply it to the mesh way so you can get a feeling of how it works. If you're looking for best practice in the future, we do offer a deploy Istio to production workshop, which you can learn um, how to incrementally enable mutual TLS to the mesh. So in this lab, uh, we're going to enable Mitra TLS globally. We're going to explain to you how workload key and certificates are distributed in Istio. We're going to inspect the key and certificate for each of the services. And then we're going to show you how Mutual TLS is enforced in the Istio proxy. So you will get to see like the sleep container able to access web API with sleep container not able to access web API when they don't have the proxy. So let's go to lab four. Hopefully our environment is ready. Yes. So first thing we want to do is make sure you are in this folder, which I think you are. Uh, we're going to do um, peer authentication policy check on all the namespace just to make sure if you have any installed config so you don't have any. So the thing we're going to do is uh, apply um, mutual TLS strict mode to my Istio system, which by the way is our root configuration namespace by default. Um, you could optionally config to use a different namespace, um, but this is the one we uh, have in our environment. Uh, comes with the demo profile. We're going to now be able to view that um, default. Um, peer authentication we just uh, installed to our Kubernetes cluster. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to install um, the sleep application in the default namespace. Why we are doing this is because remember we only enable sidecar injection on the Istio in action namespace, right? So if you are deploy this into the sleep namespace, you're not going to get the sidecar injected. So let's double check that, right? So now if we um, form the sleep part in the default namespace, if we curl web API, what's going to happen? Connection reset. Why is that? Remember, we just talked about there's no sidecar proxy. There's no upgrades the connection to mutual TLS. So Web API is going to reject this request. Um, what's going to happen if we do the same command but from the Istio in action namespace? Ta da! It works nicely, right? Now let's generate some load on our environment here. Now, if we go back to Kayali, uh, let's go ahead from terminal two, because this command is holding up my terminal. Uh, now, if we go back to Kayali, and if we go to the graph here, 
if you enable security and traffic animation, you don't have to. But one thing I want to point out is um, you can actually see this thing here. Sorry. Mutual TLS mesh wide is enabled. So Kayali actually knows it's intelligent um, to to know that I enable strict mutual TLS for my entire mesh. So let's check out how this works. Um, so with that, I'm going to get out of here and uh, we're going to do a proxy config command to check out the secrets for Web API. From the output, you can see the default secret and also the Istio service mesh root CA. Now let's check the issuer for the public certificate. So if you use the same proxy uh, config command, but in this case, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, retrieve a little bit more information and then use Big64 to decode that. You can see the issuer is clustered local. Um, and then let's check if the default secret is valid, right? As you can see, it's valid for a day, very short time, but it is valid. You should see your today's timestamp, by the way, because this is recorded. The other thing we are going to check is verify the identity of the client certificate is correct. So um, as you can see, it's uh, using the Spiffy ID for the Web API service account in the Istio in action namespace. So this is the Spiffy format that follows trust domain namespace um, and uh, service account. So you might be wondering, where does the cluster local and Web API value comes from, right? So we're going to teach you how to figure that out. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out uh, in the Istio config map, uh, there is a trust domain configuration. So this is essentially configured at the installation time of your Istio. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is view the Web API deployment YAML. As you can see, we actually created a service account called Web API. So the next question I want to ask you is how does the Web API service obtain the necessary keys and certificates? So remember early on, we reviewed the Istio proxy container configuration, and there are a few volumes mounted here, right? Like the Istio token, Istio CA certs. So these uh, volumes are from the config map in the Istio in action namespace. So if you do a config map, in Istio in action, you should be able to see the root CA search uh, volume. So during the start time, Istio agent, uh, which by the way is also called pilot agent, creates the private key from the web API service and then sends the certificate signing request to Istio D which is the default Istio certificate authority in our installation to sign a private key and then using the Istio token, which by the way is mounted to the pod um, here, using the Istio token and also the Web API service account token, which is also mounted to the pod. So the Istio agent have all that information um, can send the certificate signing request and then and then Istio CA can send back with um, the signed key inserts. And this is also why the certificate expires in 24 hours because we have the capability to do 
automatically key signing. So before it's expiring, we're going to send the same certificate signing request. Make sure that certificate is valid. So the next question I want you to ask is how is my mutual TRS strictly enforced by the sidecar proxy? So we're going to take a look at the proxy config, all configuration. It's actually a bunch of configurations here. Um, one thing I want to highlight here is uh, you uh, you will notice this time we don't allow raw traffic. We only allow um, the TLS traffic. So if you go through uh, the configuration here, um, let's see, you will see it's only for the trusted um, TLS traffic. So basically, when mutual TLS strict is enabled, you would only allow mutual TLS traffic and uh, the raw traffic are rejected. So you, it won't go through. Let's see if we can search for transport protocol here. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to find out the information here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I think it wrap over. Yeah, these are route config. Yeah, this is a TLS certificate, okay. Now, my other question to you is, you've only deployed a few services. Why is there so many Envoy configuration for the pod, right? Because we can't even scroll up to view all the configuration, which is pretty sad. Um, the reason is Istio listens to everything in your Kubernetes cluster by default. So you can actually uh, config this with some of the advanced configurations such as discovery selector or the sidecar resource, which we will cover in a future workshop for you.
Congratulations! You have enabled strict mutual TLS for your Istio service mesh. Um, let's go ahead and load the next challenging and uh, allow me to talk through here. So for the next challenge, which is our last challenge, <laughs> we're going to talk about how to control traffic when you have more than one version, which is very common, right? As you increase your velocity of your services, you're going to end up with more than one version. So we're going to have a route between different versions. How do we dock launch the services? How do I shift some percentage of the traffic to the new services? So we're going to teach you about, again, also about virtual services for the route configuration, but a little bit more on destination rule with subsets, right? When you have multiple versions, that's when destination rules are needed to configure how you're going to split the traffic among the multiple versions. We're going to also teach you service entry because the, there's a new version of our service that requires access to our external services. So the first thing in lab five is stock launching purchase history version two, which is a, a simple version I wrote. And then we're going to do a canary test on this new version by split of 80 21st. And then eventually when we feel confident, we're going to roll 100% of the traffic to version two. And we're also introducing version three by dock launching it. And then we're going to also, uh, version three allows you to connect to external services. So uh, we're going to add resilience to version three and also control the outbound services for version three. So let's go ahead uh, with the demo of five. Let's see all the challenges ready here. Okay, I think we're already at this location. So uh, let's check out purchase history version two. So this is a fake service that I made some modification for version two. And I think the main ver modification is just to say, you know, I want to have um, purchase history version two here as my output message. And I'm actually also using external services uh, called JSON placeholder. So it's a dummy uh, JSON services that I'm using because I want to get my message from that uh, external services. So the next thing we're going to do is um, deploy this uh, purchase history OV1. So it essentially teaches Istio to route all the traffic to purchase history version one. So my question to you is, should I deploy the purchase history virtual service first, or should I deploy the new version of version two first of purchase history? The answer is we want you to deploy the virtual service first because that's how you can guarantee 100% traffic goes to version one. If you deploy the purchase history version two first, the moment the deployment is running, Kubernetes is going to run robbing the traffic between version one and version two, which is not really what we wanted here. Let's review the destination rule here because uh, there is a subset here. So, you, um, but essentially in through the destination rule of purchase history, we're indicating for subset version one, which is selected by label version equals V1. So um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to apply the virtual service and destination rule we just talked about. Remember, this needs to be first before the deployment is deployed. And then we can start to deploy the version two uh, purchase history deployment. 
Now let's go ahead, confirm the deployment is running. It could take a second or two. As soon as you see both version 1 and version 2 running, I want you to go there and check out the logs of version 2. So as you can see, the logs looks okay. So nothing looks odd here. Actually, no, sorry. As you can see, there is a connection. Uh, yeah, unable to connect, connection refused. Yeah, so there is an arrow here. That's not good, right? Because it couldn't reach out to the JSON service at the beginning, at the startup time. This is not great. How do we fix this? Now let's generate some load. So as you can see, um, my virtual service and destination rule is working because all the traffic continue routes to version 1. So even though our version 2 is bad, well, sort of bad, it doesn't impact my version 1. And I didn't have to redeploy anything for version 1. Now let's go ahead and fix this, right? How do we solve this problem? I have an updated version of Purchase History version 2. And in the updated version, the only thing different is I added this annotation called hold application until your proxy starts. So in Istio, by default, the proxy container and the application container starts in parallel. So there's no guarantee that when your application container is starting, the proxy is already ready. So this annotation ensures that the application container does not start until the proxy is ready, which is absolutely needed in our container here because it reaches to your external services. So let's go ahead and deploy this guy here. Now if we wait until this guy is running. Now if we check the logs here, unfortunately we, I think we check a little bit too early. So let me go to Istio in action. Yeah, so this is still terminated, which is probably why um, the logs didn't Show. Now, if you can hear, um, the logs looks good now, right? So it's able to start the service and it's able to connect, right? Even though there's no post, but it's actually working. So that annotation is our rescue here. Now, uh, let's test the version 2. Remember, it's doc launch, so we can't easily test through the it's your ingress gateway, but we could potentially test it when we exact into that pod, and then we should be able to curl the local host, right? So you can see now the response not only says version two, it actually generates uh, some response by asking the JSON placeholder service and print that response back uh, from the JSON placeholder service. So this is exactly what we wanted, right? We get to V2, we were able to connect to the external services and get a good feedback. The next thing is version two looks good. Let's try to roll maybe some percentage or maybe a header base first. So let's uh, try to do a header base first. So we're gonna say, you know, when the user is JSON, we're gonna route to version two. So let's go ahead and apply this virtual service configuration. Um, now if we curate the visit the web API service and if we use user JSON, what do you think is going to happen? Hmm, we're still getting purchase history version one. Why is that? Okay, the reason is user equals JSON here. We had lowercase j. We had an exact match for uppercase j. So let's correct that. 
hopefully this time would it work yeah as you can see we get a version to a, a, a nice um, reply back the next thing we're going to do is canary testing uh, we're going to try to shift 20% uh, of traffic to our new version let's go ahead and apply this and uh, let's generate some load as you can see you know we had about 20 percent traffic goes to version 2 so we have 4 out of 20 so it's exact 20 percent next thing we want to do as we increase our confidence is let's put 80, uh, 50 percent to version 2 so let's go ahead and apply this virtual service and now if we do the same query hopefully we would have a nice split as you can see you know immediately after I apply my virtual service it still picks up right it automatically routes 50% without me needing to change anything in my version 1 or version 2 let's shift all traffic ready for that to version 2 it's looking good so this configuration um, applied now if we do a test here we would expect only version 2 the next thing we want to talk about is control outbound traffic right remember we had an external service json placeholder so what if I don't want any traffic going outbound, only the traffic that I as the admin or operator are allowed? Check our installation. You can see uh, we didn't have anything config. So this means we have the default outbound traffic policy, which is allow any so when allow any means uh, is used, that means any external traffic are allowed. So we're going to modify our Istio installation a little bit to say, you know what, I only want registered service. I don't want anything else. Now let's confirm the new configuration is picked up. Um, so yeah it is registry only now right so let's go and let's go ahead send some traffic Ooh, maybe the traffic would have failed now because uh, it doesn't have access to version 2 it does take a little while for that to pick up so the reason is um the registry only is config in a config map and we don't expect you to have config map changed constantly so it does take a little while i think it's like one or two minutes for it to pick up now you can see you know when you call from recommendation to purchase history it's getting 503 because purchase history couldn't access that external service remember it still automatically config retries for two times so you actually see a retry here of three times attempts to get access and it fails uh, So this is all expected, right? Because we tell Istio not allow anything unless it's registered. So let's go ahead and fix that. The way to fix that is using service entry resources in Istio. So through the service entry, I register with Istio. This is my external services and the services external to my mesh. And, uh, you know, I'm going to access it through HTTPS using TLS on um, port 443. And I'm going to rely on the DNS resolution to resolve this host. Let's go ahead and apply this service entry in our Istio in action namespace. And now if we send some traffic here, hopefully 
it's going to work yeah it did so as you can see it still automatically pick up the configuration within many seconds The other thing I want to mention is you can also put a virtual service on the external service. Like in this example, I'm adding a timeout of three seconds when accessing this JSON placeholder, right? So if it's over three seconds, I'm timing out. So you can add timeouts and retries to increase the resilience for that connection to the external services. Now, my question to you is, what if you want to securely restrict which paths can access the external service? Should you send the traffic to your external service through Istio Egress Gateway? We will cover that in the Istio Expert Workshop. Okay, let's wrap up for this workshop, for this lab. A service mesh like Istio has a lot of capabilities to allow you to manage traffic flow within the mesh, allow you to control what's the entry to the mesh and also the traffic leaving the mesh. These capabilities really allow you to control precisely how you want your traffic to be controlled for your services. You can also use Istio easily to build uh, resilience through timeout, retries, circuit breaker, and outlier detection to increase the resilience of your services. We will have a bonus section. If you are ahead, I encourage you to do the bonus section. If you don't have time, don't worry. Um, most people won't be able to get to it, especially in under two hours. So I don't expect you to finish them. Uh, it's not required for passing the test. Um, so if you like, you can go ahead um, follow up for the bonus section but given the time we're going to wrap up so like i mentioned this is the istio foundation badge i'm going to send out the test and survey in the chat room so you can access the test please give us the feedback and uh, good luck with your test I expect we will be able to issue you a good badge upon your successful test of passing 80%. Before I let you go, I want to talk about at Solo, we provide enterprise Istio production support through our glue mesh. We provide uh, upstream Istio and minus four long-term enterprise support. Uh, we provide critical security patches within uh, a day after the security announcement is out. We provide, you know, very high level uh, SLA for step one. Also, we have a lot of Istio expertise in-house, provide architecture and operation guidance. So thank you. And to learn more, visit solo.io. We have essential workshop. We have Istio expert workshop coming. So check us out and sign up for an upcoming workshop to learn more about Istio and GluMesh. Thank you so much. I will be around for any questions you may have.